Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Nile. Make your moment sparkle. Louis from BlueNile.com and Locked On MLB listeners will get $50 off of purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement rings, so use code Locked On at podcasts. And now, get ready for a Locked On MLB, Locked On Reds crossover podcast. You are locked on MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all of Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. And as you can tell from my lower third, I'm about to pop up right now. You can call me Sully. I'm a baseball podcaster. I've been doing this for over a decade. I'm an Emmy nominated TV producer. Maybe you saw me on HBO Sports, Curse of the Bambino, Reverse the Curse of the Bambino, written stuff for magazines such as the uh, the Sporting News and the Hardball Times and producing some TV shows. Or perhaps you just know me as your pal Sully. But either way, I'm here giving you some Locked On MLB all year long. Thanks so much for making us your first listen as we're available on all your free podcasting catchers. Hey, Jeff Carr from Locked On Reds is my guest today. The Reds, they're red hot. If you're a contender facing the Reds, guess what? You're going to lose. Very small sample size, but several games in a row, and it's uh, thrown a little bit of a monkey wrench into the American League East plans. Oh, by the way, you, you can follow us at Lockdown MLB Pods on Instagram and on Twitter. And I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Base Podcast on Instagram. So, yeah, um, the fact of the matter is the Cincinnati Reds have kind of startlingly won a couple of really big games against some really good teams and done so in a wild variety of fashions. But who am I to talk about the Cincinnati Reds? I've been to Cincinnati. I've been to a Reds game. But back then they had players like Barry Larkin and they had a white hat and they looked like good humor men. No, 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 no. Let's bring in someone who knows what he's talking about. He's my friend. He's the friend of the podcast. He's the friend of all things Reds. Guess what, folks? It's Jeff Carr. How you doing, buddy? Sully, I'm over the moon. I cannot believe what the Reds have been doing here lately because it's been the opposite of most of the season. Okay, let's just specifically talk about tonight because tonight was 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 banana time. The Reds, and I'll, I'll go into what happened with Tampa over the weekend, but the Reds went to Yankee Stadium. And the Yankees coming off of a, you know, a interesting series with the Boston Red Sox, where there were two very close games and two games that were, you know, there was a split. It was a classic Red Sox Yankees series. I'm not convinced those games are over. They may still be going on. And the Reds are supposedly the team that you circle on the schedules like, okay, here's a couple of easy wins. Cole pitched very well. It was three nothing going to the ninth, and it seemed like okay. Kind of what we thought was going to happen. Holmes is coming in. He's unstoppable. And then suddenly it happened. Everything went wrong. Holmes forgot how to throw a strike. Walk, walk, hit batsman. Um, And then he uh, two runs came in, and they took out Peralta. Now, I think Holmes got a hold with recording no outs and walking, I think, Five I batters. That, right? <laughs> I think he got a hold. I may have to look it up. And then Peralta came within one pitch of getting out of a bases loaded, nobody out jam with a couple of like rollers to the plate that arose to one was to the pitcher and the other was to Donaldson, I think. And then, uh, and then India got the, the hit. And uh, by the way, uh, Holmes did not get credited with a hold. He got credited with a loss. Okay, so there is 
a tiny bit of justice in the world. But a startling victory for the Cincinnati Reds, uh, of which they only showed up for one inning. So tell us a little bit about your thoughts of this, Jeff. Oh, they were shut down, Sully, for the first eight. I mean, the first seven, Garrett Cole had them on lockdown. There was nothing they could do. I think in the third, they had runners on first and third with one out and didn't get a run. But that was the only inning that I looked at and said maybe they could have done some damage to Garrett Cole. And then on the flip side of things, they had a rookie pitching, Graham Ashcraft, who's been very nice ever since getting called up. But, I mean, you're talking about a dude that's still trying to get his sea legs in the MLB. And, oh, hey, here's Yankee Stadium. And, oh, hey, this is the third best record they've had at this point in the season in the franchise history. The Yankees franchise history. So it's like, yeah, yeah you got to face all of that. And and still keep him in the ball game, and and he did. He didn't pitch amazing, but he kept him in the ball game. You had Nick Senzel slipping in center field on a can of corn. I just thought you, you watching this game, and you're like, this is one of those games where the Reds just don't have enough. And then all of a sudden, Clay Holmes, like you said, I mean, all star closer, one of the best relief pitchers in baseball, just for a moment explodes. And when you say that, you know, people are circling the Reds as a big win on their, or as an easy win on their calendar, Reds right. fans looked at this series and said, there's no way we already lost all three games. I had comments out the wazoo on YouTube saying, stop it with your positivity. They've already lost these three games. Let's look toward the weekend. Well, well now to be fair, everybody is working for the weekend, but yeah. <laughs> Let's give credit where credit's due. Okay. Ashcraft didn't pitch well. He did right. give him five. Okay. And he let up, he had 10 base runners in five innings, but only three of them came in to score. And you had Hoffman. I don't even know how to pronounce Gibalt's name. Did I say it right? Gibalt? I think it's Jabot. Jabot. Okay. There you go. That just shows you all those years of taking French and living in a French speaking country. <laughs> it's Gibalt. <laughs> I've never heard of him. First time you witnessed me saying his name out loud for the first time. Got okay. claimed off waivers last weekend. Yeah, so he <laughs> doesn't even know how to pronounce his name. And San Martin, right? Or is it San Martin? San Martin. All right. Well, good for them for throwing three shutout innings. The right. Yankees, now, now, they they didn't really pound any of the above. Each one of them let up a base runner. Um, Gibu. Struck out two batters, but good for them for not letting the game get out of hand. You know, when yeah, you're, they were up, they were losing three nothing. This you, we've all seen this Yankee team. They could have gone on like a five run pounding. Next thing you know, a middle infield is pitching the ninth inning, or maybe some guy named Gibbo. And uh, they take the lead, and then Diaz, uh, who's the brother of the Mets closer, uh, came so in. Weird. They got a, uh, a video review double play at the end. No more exciting way to end a game <laughs> than with a video review double play. Um, but, uh, yeah, give the Reds bullpen credit for keeping them in the game. It's something that they've been doing. I think it's the biggest reason why they have their longest win streak of the season so far. I mean, this is five games in a row now that they've won. And the way that Alexis Diaz has been pitching has been phenomenal. It's great to have him back. But guys that they're getting, like Jabot and San Martin, has been a lot better since going to the bullpen. I've kind of given him some crap because he had trouble with inherited runners for a little bit after getting called back up because they tried to have him start. He really wasn't much of a starter. And now he's kind of having a little bit of a renaissance in the bullpen. So we'll see how that continues to develop. But yeah, I mean, whenever Graham Ashcraft came out of the ball game. After five innings, I was like, here we go. I even sent out a tweet. I said, I have a feeling that three runs is not going to be the biggest lead for the Yankees in tonight's game. Lo and behold, shout out to, I believe his name was Yoda Shiesty on Twitter, said that, yeah, this is the kind of Reds team that's going to come back and win four to three. And I was like, yeah, sure. I'd like to see that happen. And they did. I, I just, I, I'm over the moon with how they were able to come back. And I know you say bases on balls and things like that, but you got to take advantage of those situations. And Jonathan India came up big when he had yes. to a dude who has struggled since coming off the IL, but he is but really starting to figure it he's out. He's had some big hits yeah. since coming off the IL, though. Even, but like I'm telling you something. Oh yeah, you got to stop and think. When the Yankees were up three nothing against the Reds, 
no offense, this is not a team that's uh, pennant bound. The odds against this happening must have been astronomical. Astronomical. And do you know what I wish I did at that moment? I wish I went to Bet Online, which is still the one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including the Major League Baseball regular season and all the Cincinnati Reds games while we're at it. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting, wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, it's where the game starts. We're here with Jeff Carr. We were here with Jeff Carr. There you are. We're here with Jeff Carr. Sorry, your screen blinked out for a second. I thought maybe my singing, my brand new, I think that's the 40th <laughs> jingle I've written for Bet Online. Uh, all registered at ASCAP. Um, let's just talk about one other quick thing here. The, the Yankees looked at this series with the Reds and said, ah, win. And now the Reds have to, if they, they just, you can split two games. Yeah. You know, you can Especially split. Especially they got Castillo on the mound on Thursday. I mean, right? You're talking he's about a, an he's a solid situation. pitcher. Yeah, you know, um, you know, you have a chance if you, especially when you lose a game like that and you put a team a little bit on their heels. Okay, mm-hmm. that's a frustrating loss. In fact, uh, be sure to listen to uh, Locked On Yankees with Stacey Gatsoulias tomorrow because that's sure to be pretty funny. But. Tampa Bay last weekend probably said, okay, we're going to Cincinnati, nice city, beautiful ballpark, and we've got great pitching. They're the Cincinnati Reds. And lo and behold, not only did the Reds win the series, they swept them with a pair of extra inning Um, (laughs) walk-offs. Talk us through what happened in that and how this really unusual sweep took place. I had a coach in high school tell me that sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. There's were some situations in those games where the Reds were better to be lucky than good, namely Friday night when they won in a bulk off that it's only happened 23 times in the history of baseball. Yep. I, I, I still, and I still to this, I, I watched the video of I what no idea what was. I have no clue. No idea. Was. No, oh, wait, I don't know if you follow Keith. I, I don't know if you follow Keith Law or not, but Keith Law on Twitter said a runner who should not have been there was balked in by a balk that didn't happen because it was a ghost <laughs> runner who was right. balked in. So it's you're I, you're playing out the doomsday scenario that we want to see happen for Rob Manfred's benefit. But yeah, the balk off and then a great extra innings win for the Reds on Saturday. And then on yeah. Sunday, just a absolute, just explosion for them on the, on the lineup side of things. I, I was watching that series kind of in shock, to be honest with you. And I know there were a lot of people that pointed out, yeah, no Wander Franco, no Kevin Kiermeyer. I think there were some other injuries that the Rays were dealing with, but you know what? So what? The Reds have been bad. Yes. <laughs> like, I, I don't want to hear about who's, who's yeah. When, when a team that's a legitimate <laughs> playoff contender that has images of going to a pennant dancing in their head goes, plays a team that won three games in April yeah. That you know you're supposed to win those games mm-hmm. if you're the re- if you're the Rays, and yeah. I really think that there may have been after the Bach game, there may have been a little bit of ah, but we're going to win the next one, you mm-hmm. know. And by the time the 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 uh, um, the Reds exploded on the the game on the uh, on on Sunday, where they doubled up the Rays ten to five, you know the Rays just didn't look good that game. And, you know, the and the Reds, because remember the Rays with their really deep pitching, the Reds were up 10 nothing after three or four innings. I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't like it wasn't like a four to five game. And then there was an eighth inning grand slam or something like that. No, this game was over early. I actually remember on, on Sunday, I just quickly glanced at the score when I was checked on the phone. 
And I, man, my eyes must be weird because it looks like 10 nothing. Clearly, it's no score. And then I flip it. No, it's 10 nothing against Shane Baz, too. Like, yeah, I couldn't a good believe picture. how. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have a stellar career. And I think that was just one of those, you know, rookie hiccups that guys tend to have. But overall, that weekend as a whole was insane because they played eight games in seven days. And they yep. and if you go back to the Sunday before that, the final game against the Braves, they had four walk-off victories from Sunday through Sunday. Right. It's just phenomenal week for this team. And I look back on this and I say, you know what? If the Reds are able to avoid 100 losses, which I'm really, really hoping they are. I'm not saying that they're going to make the wild card. I know they added another spot. That's not happening. I'm not saying that they're going to contend for anything in the NL Central. That's not happening. Just don't lose 100 games. And if they well, don't, think, I'm pointing to that week. Well, yeah, and think about some of the games they won. It wasn't just they had walk-off games. They had a walk-off game against Atlanta, okay? Mm -hmm. And Atlanta's been playing, obviously, since they got off to a little bit of a rocky start. They went on that, was it, 14, 15-game winning streak. They've been red hot. They had a walk-off against them. They had a walk-off of the game that Max Scherzer started, where Max yep. Scherzer was like came back from Mount Olympus and like, you know, it was it, it was kind of like from in Superman 2 when Superman got his powers back and took on General Zod. Yeah, I'm making more 80s movies references. They make sense in my head. And Scherzer with his his eyes in different color suddenly came out and he was he was a blazon. It was like nothing, it was like he hadn't been gone. And the Reds came back against the Mets bullpen and won that game. That was a game that they just it looked like, oh well, here's the storyline. You know, that's the, yeah, the right. narrative is Scherzer's back and, and he is, and he pitched wonderfully his next game too. But you know, you walk off against Atlanta, you walk off against Max Scherzer, sweep the uh Bay Rays with a pair of walk offs. This is obviously you can't walk off in uh on the road, on the but road. what that means is they're winning lots of late games. They're yeah. coming back, they're cardiac <laughs> kids. You can't give up on them, Sully. You can't give up on them. I don't care who they – and I think that you know this doesn't tr change a whole lot of things for the plans of the Reds, but when I just look at this past now, we're extending it to, what, 10 days, I think, now, yeah. if I count right. It's been fun to watch the Reds, and I can't say that for a lot of stretches during this season. Well, the, the, you could not possibly start worse than this team did. I mean, they won. Now, and you and I were talking before we hit record. Lest we forget, this team started on a winning on a winning note. They took on the World Series champions, stared them down, and went one and zero. And then they Spoiler. proceeded to lose. What was it twenty three of their next twenty five games or something yeah, insane like that? Ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> uh, as my Bob would say, it's a lot to not enough. Uh, yeah. it was, uh, yeah, it was truly, uh, it was truly a disastrous start to the season. And, and lest we forget, I know I don't have to tell you this, but, and as this is a crossover locked on reds, and if this is on the locked on reds feed, I don't have to tell you this either, but for, you know, people who don't really pay close attention in order to think about the last time the reds were contending and in a playoff spot, you have to go all the way back to September of 2021. They were tied wild card spot with only three weeks to go. There was a scenario last year that if St. Louis didn't go on that mind-boggling winning streak at the end of the year, that the Reds might have latched on to be the sacrificial lamb to Los Angeles in the wild card <laughs> game. Right. You give the Cardinals credit. They actually it had, it was forced to be a walk off game, but still, you know the Reds were a contending team last year. The Reds sure. made the playoffs in the truncated COVID season. Granted, they scored zero runs, but still, you know, this this is not so far removed. And so when they put two sticks of dynamite in this team and trade anything that wasn't named Joey Votto away, and you know, they Almost. start the season. What was it? What was it? Three and twenty-three or something like that? Three and twenty-two. But okay, sorry. I, 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 I do want a short change <laughs> of that one, that, that an extra loss there. Uh, no, but, you know, when you have a season that is just could be humiliation central, you know, this is a moment that you're like, hey, we're a team. We do have some interesting players on this team. You know, let's dust yeah. ourselves off and not be pushed over. And, you know, they have this run where they're playing Atlanta, the Mets, 
Okay, a couple games against the Pirates. Tampa, the Yankees, the Cardinals, another series with the Cardinals. And then later, Baltimore. I'll, I'll hint about Baltimore at the end segment there. Um, this is a stretch where the Reds could put their foot down and say, hey, you don't just run through us. you got to close us out. Right. And that's been a thing with this team during the early going has been they play up or down to their competition, which has been frustrating when they're playing teams that are on their same level. They've struggled with the Cubs and guys like that. But to see them step up, and that's what I said the podcast leading into the series. I'm like, I don't even care. Like, if they win two out of three, we might have to have some kind of parade or something because I'm not thinking that the Reds are going to win the series against the Yankees. And here we are. They got a shot to win that second game or the third game and win the series. It's just it, – it blows my mind that the Reds have been put into this position and they've done so with some guys who are going to be here after the trade deadline. We're not even saying that, Hey, Luis Castillo did this. Brandon Drury did this. Tommy Pham did this. We're saying this was Graham Ashcraft, a bunch of relievers who aren't going anywhere and Jonathan India. And then, you know, I mean, some guys that get on base as well walks and stuff, but they're going to be here. And that's what is so exciting for me. Well, look, at they're building up some memories for Reds fans of having these cool wins. And maybe one of these years, they'll put up enough memories that they could maybe, I don't know, win a ring. And do you know what? If you want to make some great memories and get yourself a ring, may I suggest checking out BlueNile.com. Whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating the Reds coming back and beating the Yankees in a regular season game in July, Find jewelry as unique as the one you love with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Looking for fine jewelry but having trouble choosing? Blue Nile has expert jewelry mines on hand 24-7, available via phone or by chat to help you find a memorable gift at any budget. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On MLB listeners get $50 off of any purchase of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement rings. So use code Locked On. That's code Locked On. Plus, every order is insured, ships for free, and arrives in discreet packaging. Won't give away what's inside. You can make the su- surprise the way you want it. Shop stress free. There's going to be enough stress at the wedding. And find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. Uh, let me just give you a, what's happening in an upcoming episode of Lockdown MLB, which I'm hoping I'm recording tomorrow. Uh, Dan Roddix of the Baltimore Sun, big Orioles guy. I used to be uh, a frequent guest on the Orioles uh, podcast through the Baltimore Sun. And he's going to be a guest on the podcast, hopefully recording tomorrow. We've been playing a little bit of email tag, but uh, he is super excited about the uh, Orioles' recent winning streak. They won again against the Cubs. Uh, What I love about Dan is when he posts anything about the Orioles via the the Baltimore Sun Twitter handle and his Twitter handle there, no matter what, he always links me on the tweet. So sometimes I see... (laughs) Why am I being linked to 500 Orioles fans? Like, oh, Dan Roddix. Dan Roddix, because he wants my opinion. And so he's coming on. Uh, he was a guest on the old Sully Baseball Show. So this is actually his debut on Lockdown MLB. So I'm really looking forward. Dan, Dan Roddix is a uh, you know, great Baltimore guy, rabid Orioles fan, even when they stink. And now they technically don't stink. They have climbed the Mount Everest to Mount Mediocre. They're 500. That's quite uh, uh, quite a hill to climb. Hey, by the way, uh, I know I'm not supposed to do this bit of uh, reading and now, but do you know what? I am going to because it actually is uh, – uh, it it ties into something I want to say to you. Uh, check out Lockdown MLB Prospects because host Lindsey Crosby, he's a prospect encyclopedia. He's going deep on the stars of tomorrow. It's free and wherever you get podcasts. The reason why I'm bringing that up is the Orioles – this is something I'm going to talk to Dan about. I want to Lindsey Crosby about this. They're going to be contenders next year. They have the first pick of the draft. Should they use that first pick of the draft for someone who could be major league ready in 2023? And it's like making a trade or a free agent signing. I know the temptation, you want to sign the best player, but if you could just add someone to help the team next year, that's got to be a temptation. Anyway, right. the Reds don't have that issue. Um, 
and you and I were you and I were chatting before we hit record. You said to me that you hope that this, as fun as this run has been, beating the Mets, beating the Braves, beating Tampa, beating New York, you're hoping that the Reds don't take their eye off the prize with the trade deadline in two and a half weeks, and they have to. You're saying they should be actively trying to move some of the veteran pieces and build for the future. Yeah, they should be one of the most active sellers, if not the most active seller. Because kind of like you mentioned, they traded almost everybody who's not Joey Votto. They still got Luis Castillo and Tyler Malley that they could really mm-hmm. get some good players back for. And, and there's not a single contending team that should be – like writing Luis Castillo off their list. Luis Castillo can turn the Dodgers into a World Series favorite. They can turn the Mets into a World Series favorite. They can turn, I mean, the Yankees have great pitching, but you could go get Luis Castillo and you could just smash everybody else in the playoffs. So with that in mind, if they are going to look at, if the front office and ownership are going to look at this recent stretch of success and get confused and think maybe we should stand pat, then no, 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 no. Because the next time the Reds are good is 2024. And if there's a guy on this roster that's not going to be here in 2024, but he has some trade value now, you better cash in. And Luis Castillo and Tyler Malley are not going to be here in 2024. Their, Their rookie contracts are up at the end of next season. And based on the way that the Reds treat their payroll, I definitely think Luis Castillo has priced himself out of any sort of contract extension that the Reds could negotiate from this point forward. And I think Tyler Malley kind of has too. So you've got to take that trade value and, you know, emulate this team that you just swept in the Rays and maybe try and roll with a small market thing. They always beat Reds fans over the head with the fact that they're a small market team. So, okay. You're not going to pay money for big money free agents and big money trades. That's fine. You better build from within and you better have a lot of talent to pull from. And right now they have a decent amount, but they also have some questions. Supplement those questions with more talent with trades this trade deadline season. I think there are three places that I think would be really intriguing for Luis Castillo to land. Um, Obviously, Boston. Um, they've uh, some of the pitchers are coming back. Chris Sale pitched. Uh, the Red Sox lost the game, but Sale pitched very well. Five innings of shutout ball, and they're hoping Yovaldi comes back. They could use pitching depth, especially if they want to hang around. I'm always intrigued by adding pitching to Minnesota, especially mm-hmm. as they're in first place. And if there's going to, they obviously, if you're looking at the the biggest contenders in the American League, it's going to be Houston and obviously the Yankees. So for a team like Minnesota to possibly play spoiler in the postseason to win the division, as right now they have a they 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 have a lead in the division, they go in and if they have decent starting pitching depth, to then hope they can get through the, that that first sort of wild card, you know, mini round where they would then go on to play either Houston or New York and hope that their pitching can, you know, neutralize them the way that Atlanta's neutralized both Milwaukee and Los Angeles and ultimately Houston last year. I think that those two are very, two very intriguing teams for Castillo, as would be the Miami Marlins who are on the kind of on the periphery of the wild card, but the two times they won the world series, they had a second baseman named Luis Castillo and I just think it would be so wonderfully confusing, kind of like when the <laughs> Dodgers had Mike Marshall win the Cy Young Award in the 70s and then won the World Series with a right fielder named Mike Marshall in the 80s, not the same dude. Uh, I would just want to have enough Marlin fans say, wait, Luis Castillo? Yes. Luis Castillo. No, no, different Luis Castillo. Just that- to have that little bit of confusion in Miami. That would be a heck of a one-two punch of Alcantara and Castillo there in that rotation. Yeah. And I, and it'd be a return of sorts. He was a prospect in the Marlins organization for a moment after they got him from San Diego and then uh, swip, uh, uh, shipped them on up to Cincinnati for Dan Straley uh, back in the day. But, no, that'd be interesting. You know, Boston fans would love watching that changeup. It would uh, strike their memories for a certain other guy with a really good changeup. And then the Twins, I mean, reuniting with Sonny Gray, uh, that'd be Mm -hmm. intriguing to see. Because that was something that Nash said the other day was that 
are the twins good or are they going to be frauds that get exposed in the first round of the playoffs? He says, I think they're somewhere in between. I don't think they're good yet. I think they're incomplete. Luis Castillo would help them get a little bit uh, closer to being a complete playoff contender. But we have seen some teams that you could say, oh, they're in it for because someone had to get in. We've seen instances of that where that team is cashed in in the postseason, where they're like, well, no one's expecting. Hell, the Braves last year. Right. You know, I mean, granted, they were after like, you know, mid July, their record was unbelievable, but they, you could still look at it. They were in sub 90 win team. They're the smallest number of wins of any of the playoff teams in the play- playoffs last year. You had 200 win teams in the West. You know, so obviously either San Francisco or LA are going to be the team going to the World Series or Milwaukee with their great pitching. Nope. The Braves were an afterthought. And sometimes right. when you have a team that's an afterthought and you have other teams that are, you know, supposedly, you know, these these giant like, you know, or hell, I go to the 2011 Cardinals, you know, who only made the playoffs because the Braves collapsed. They wouldn't if the Braves were just bad down the stretch, the Cardinals would have missed the playoffs altogether. And Pujols' final year in St. Louis would have been a whimper. Uh, instead, we got, you know, the great, you know, the two amazing series, again, one against Philadelphia and one against uh, Texas, and the Cardinals wound up winning. Look, at, I still think either Houston or New York are going to the American, are going to be the American League champs, but the way to, to top them is to just stockpile pitching and hope that you, uh, you know, hope that you can relax. Good, peach, good pitching beats good hitting in the playoffs, and Luis Castillo would be at the top of the list for that. That And that was something that was interesting that Lindsay and I were talking about off air was, you know, the Braves had the Dodgers not ran Clayton Kershaw and Max Scherzer into the ground last year and Scherzer not had dead arm whenever the Dodgers faced the Braves, that the Dodgers walked through that series. It's a possibility. Yeah. It's yeah. just how this all plays out. You got to get as much pitching as you can get. But also, I mean, lest we forget that final game when Atlanta clinched. I mean, they the Braves won a pair of walk-offs. That final game, Matzik had one of the most unbelievable middle relief performances with the bases loaded. Where I'm in a bar in Los Angeles, the place was going bananas. And just, oh, yeah, well, clearly the Dodgers are winning this game, forcing in game seven. And it just didn't happen. So anyway, uh, you know we're talking Reds baseball because we're bringing up uh, Cardinals World Series, <laughs> Braves World Series, anybody but the Reds. Uh, hey, look at you know if you're a Reds fan this year, you could see your favorite players in the World Series, just not wearing Reds uniforms. Uh, right. Last question: Are they just always wearing the cursive Reds uniforms these days? Like I don't see any of the 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 C on the lapel. I mean, it's, is it, um, is, have we just gone to Curse of Reds? It's it's their like key alternate. Um, and then alternate. The they, they have the, every game I see, they're wearing it. <laughs> right, and they and they haven't worn the gray ones a lot. The gray ones have kind of gone. It would just say Cincinnati across the chest. Yeah. have kind of gone by the wayside more so. But yeah, it's it's definitely been. I know on Sunday they wear those Curse of Reds a lot, so I thought it was interesting they wore them here tonight. But maybe they just figured, hey, more eyes are on us. Let's get this script Reds out of here. Well, you're wearing a Guardians <laughs> t-shirt. I thought it was for Ohio fans, you're wearing your Guardian shirt there. Oh yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. Winston oh, Guardians of the Th- Galaxy, not Guardians of Cleveland. I'm sorry, I got a little mixed up. So uh, I'm supposed to represent all teams, so my, I have no logo on my chest. But hey, you represent the Reds, Jeff Carr. Where can people follow you and your show? You can follow me on Twitter at Jeff Carr with three F's, and you can follow the show at Locked On Reds. And Locked On Reds is available everywhere you get podcasts, including YouTube. Yep, and it's available also available wherever you get your podcasts. That'd be locked on MLB prospects with Lindsay, uh, Lindsay Crosby, who I mentioned is a baseball prospect encyclopedia. Uh, you can follow us at locked on MLB pods on both Twitter and Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Talking about the Red Hot Reds, the 2023 National League champion Cincinnati Reds, with Ooh. the host of Locked On Reds, Jeff Carr. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. It's been a Locked On MLB, Locked On Reds crossover for the 13th day of July 2022. Happy almost Bastille Day. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.